Right, all right, so here are my little cookies. You can definitely tell nice. the um, the store-bought hot, 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 hot. Yeah. Store okay. pastry dough, right? It gets, it puffs up a little bit nice. more. This is what mine looks like. You can see that some of mine have puffed up. Nice. Welcome everyone to Chemists in the Kitchen. We are here today to do an experiment with pie crusts where we test different kinds of fats and find out how they affect things. Hi, I'm Julie Pollack. I am an associate professor of chemistry at the University of Richmond. Hi, I'm Matt Hardings. I am an associate professor of chemistry at American University in Washington, DC. Hi everyone, I'm Kim Jacoby Morris. I'm the STEM program coordinator for the Air Force Office of Scientific Research. Today in my pie crust, I'm using all butter. Today in my pie, I'm going to be channeling my dad who always uses all Crisco for his pie crust. And my pie crust today is going to have a little bit of butter, a little bit of Crisco, and just a smidge of bacon fat. With the holiday season coming up, uh, we, we love eating we love eating pies. In fact, um, I get a birthday pie every year for my birthday and not a birthday cake. I get a rhubarb pie for my birthday. Hey, Erica, Erica, come say hi to the world. <laughs> hi, Erica, pie queen. Hi. Hello, world. She is the best pie maker ever, and, and so I get to reap all the benefits from it. So for me, a pies remind me of growing up, and they remind me of my dad, who is the pie maker in our family. My dad also made 30 pies for my sister's wedding um, because pies are her favorite dessert. Growing up, I spent a lot of time with my next door neighbors who are Italian. Uh, my parents were uh, working quite a bit, so I was fortunate enough to have great neighbors with a huge Italian family and we got to spend a lot of time together, baking, cooking, all sorts of things. So I'm excited to get back to that and uh, share this recipe with you today. Let's make some dough. So for my meat pie, uh, for the crust, I use two and a half cups of flour, two sticks of butter, um, a tablespoon of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and then just a little bit of water. So in this particular bowl, I have one and a half cups of flour, a tablespoon of sugar, and a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna pour this half in first. And I'm just gonna pulse it a couple times to combine it my butter block in and then I take another cup of flour put it on top I'm gonna put it in a bowl and I'm adding cold water to this I'm really trying to be conscious not to melt my butter I'm not even using my hands for the majority of the mixing so I have to make sure to divide this ball too so that I can blind bake the bottom and then when that's all done fill it and then roll out the top separately. So I'm making sweet potato pie and my pie crust has two cups of flour, a third a cup of butter, a third a cup of Crisco, minus one tablespoon of Crisco, plus one tablespoon of <laughs> bacon fat, a little bit of salt and a quarter cup of water. So temperature is really important here when you're making pie dough and pie crust. But we're gonna try to keep things cold as we go. If your butter melts, if your fat melts, it will start affecting how everything comes together. And so we wanna keep things nice and solid. I've got butter in the fridge and I've got Crisco in the fridge. I've got two cups of sifted flour, one teaspoon of salt, uh, and now I'm gonna make a paste with, uh, with some water. All right, and I don't wanna overmix here. I don't wanna to develop too much gluten. And our gluten is just, remember, the, the proteins that are found in flour. Flour uh, is mostly starch, but it's got some proteins wrapped around it, right? And those proteins, when you add water, fall off of the starch and start connecting with one another to make gluten in. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut in my butter and my Crisco. So I'm gonna cut it into small pieces first. Remember, it's still cold. I wanna keep it cold for as long as possible. I've also got my bacon grease. We keep our bacon grease after we make bacon. Lots of good stuff you can do with this. Okay, so I'm using a third a cup of each uh, for these. Okay, now I've got my Crisco. Half a cup, a third of a cup is right here. And I'm gonna remove one tablespoon from that because I'm gonna fill that back in with bacon fat. Yay! Chomping down. And what I'm trying to get 
Again, is that flour incorporated into the fat? Let's look at this. All right, that's kind of pebbly, right? We've got some pebbles going on there. It's pebbles time! Break it down! All right, so here is that paste that I talked about earlier. Made a little paste. This is gonna help bring it all together. All right, I'm gonna take my paste and kind of spread it out a little bit to, to help it pick up some of this other stuff into the fridge. I am making an apple pie today, and my pie crust is made up of three cups of flour, one cup of Crisco, one teaspoon of salt, and a little bit of water. So I'm gonna combine the flour and the salt first, and then what we're gonna do is cut in the Crisco. Crisco tends to um, have a lot more of give associated with it because it doesn't have any of the water content associated with it. It's 100% fat. We're starting to see that it has little pieces of it coming together. I don't wanna to touch it too much because my body, my body heat will make it be, uh, start to melt the fats a little bit more. Now what we wanna to do to bring it all together is to add a little bit of water. And you can start to see as you're bringing it together and you've added the water that the whole thing is starting to come together. Unlike the yeasted dough, there are still lots of cracks and crevices in it, and that is important to get us the flakiness associated with the dough. What we want to do is set this to rest for about a half an hour or so in the refrigerator. Few minutes later. Okay, so I just pulled the half of the dough that uh, I put together before. I have floured my rolling pin and I've floured the surface of my counter in hopes that I can roll it out and then roll it back on. So mine broke. I am going to go ahead and use a fork, just kind of stab the bottom. So here I have the filling for my meat pie. I basically just took a lot of leftovers and combined them. Um, I had some bolognese and uh, meatballs, sweet potatoes, carrot, celery. And then I've had it sitting in the fridge so that it cools down. This one I'm actually going to fill my pie plate with. A little bit too thick yet for my liking. All right, so I'm gonna get this into my pie plate. Uh, I'm gonna come around the edge. All right, here we go. So I'm just rolling it out. I'm gonna cut them into to strips and, and bake little cookies to eat later. I am doing the same as Kim. I've got a little bit of softened butter here. We're gonna put it on and then add some, uh, add some cinnamon sugar to the top. Again, you don't want your butter to be too soft because then it's gonna mess with your dough. All, right. All buttered. Cinnamon sugar bay, here we go. And in the oven they go. Now that they're in, we're gonna give them 15, 20 minutes, we're just gonna watch them and look for when they're done, right? When they're nice and crispy on the top, when they've started to brown a little bit, and then we'll be ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna just cut off a part of my pie dough here. I've floured, nicely floured my uh, surface here, and I'm just gonna cut off a part of it in order to be able to roll it out. So I'm being really gentle as I'm rolling it in order to be able to get it rolled out enough to be able to put it into my pie tin. I'm gonna gently press it down. Then I'm going to just rip gently off the edges. So that is my pie. And then we're gonna roll out some just to test and see what the pie crust in and of itself looks like. Ah, all right, so here is my pie. I have my lattice top of my pie and a couple of little stars just to make it look pretty associated with it. So now I'm gonna roll out the top part of my pie. I'm gonna let that rest at room temperature for about five minutes. And in the meantime, I've let my first pie crust cool completely. And the filling for my meat pie is cold from the refrigerator. So I've left some room here, top.
kind of picking off the edges that are hanging quite far over. Okay. Got it in there. Matt? Yes? What kind of pie are you baking? I am making sweet potato pie. And so oh, I've got my, my filling all ready to go. Uh, here's the yummy filling. <laughs> With this recipe that I used, um, I, I cut up my sweet potatoes and I put them into milk and heavy cream and just turned the stove on and added a whole nutmeg and I added two cinnamon sticks and I just cooked it down. And basically as it cooks down, all of that creaminess gets into the potatoes and softens them. The, the potatoes themselves sort of, and, and the other ingredients flavor the, the heavy cream and milk that you're using and then it evaporates off like crazy. Right? And so you're basically making sweetened condensed milk the whole time that you're cooking these. And so now this is ready, all I have to do is add a couple of eggs, mix it all together, and after I blind bake my pie, I'll, I'll add, my, uh, add the custard and cook it. Uh, you can really tell the difference between the, uh, the store-bought pie crust right now and my pie crust. Let me... On the bottom there, the ones that are puffing up, those puffing up ones are definitely the store-bought crust. Uh, so mine are staying a little flakier. I just pulled I just pulled mine out of the oven and they are really really hot. But also I burnt some of my sugar on the top of it. But some of them look some of them look really excellent and are very very flaky, but very hot. Right. All right. So here are my little cookies. You can definitely tell nice. the um, the store bought uh, hot 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 yeah. store bought yeah. pastry dough. Right. It gets it puffs up a little bit more. Nice. Um, mine mine is a little bit flatter. Right, a little bit flatter. Hopefully it's a little bit flakier as well. This is what mine looks like. You can see that some of mine have puffed up. Nice. So I just have this little tiny bit that I uh, rolled out. There's this little smidgen to split for Ollie and myself here. Um, it, it's looking pretty flaky, crumbly. I think it's gonna be tasty. <laughs> they all, they all, mine looks puffy. Like this center part looks really pu is really puffy. Yeah, the center of my, there's like a little bubble there, kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I was expecting this to brown up a little bit more, and com like compared to the two of yours, because I had the added sugar and then the lactose. Well, right? What what and temperature was what temperature were you at? Uh, four hundred. Four hundred. Yeah, mm -hmm. I should have done that. Like yeah, I had so. to turn mine up. I was at three fifty, and it wasn't browning quite right, so I turned my oven up to four hundred. Should we break them? All right. One, right. two. One, two. Oh, my flaky, mine's flaking everywhere. Oh, mine scary. crumbled. Mine, <laughs> mine crumbled, mine crumbled pretty well too. All over the computer. Does it, does your house smell like the bacon when you were baking it? Like do you, can you get like that bacon smell I, associated it with does, it? Or not it does really have a little bit of bacon amount. smell, right? Even with the bacon yeah. grease just kind of sitting on the side, you can smell the, ah, smell true. the bacon. Yeah. I was interested to see if there would be significant differences in the different types of fat as we went to baking these. But as we saw, we had a lot of flakiness regardless of what fat was actually used. Um, I think we might have seen a little bit of extra puffing for things that were completely, were more fat, uh, more fat content, less water content. So more of the Crisco or the store-bought were a little bit puffier than um, the all butter or the mix of the butter and the um, Crisco. And so I think one of the biggest conclusions is use the fat that you like the best and go with that and hope that what you end up with is a flaky pie crust. I thought with that, uh... It would be a larger difference between butter and Crisco, you know, out of the combination. But mm -hmm. I was surprised they weren't they weren't too far off after mm -hmm. we baked them. The, the the melting temperature does make a difference, right, in a lot of this, and and I think Crisco has been designed to melt at about the same temperature as butter, and so. Right, and you think about when you put your your crust in the in the oven to bake, and and those fats are going to melt at right about the same place and have some similar effects on the uh, on the the pie crust that you're making. But I'm interested, Kim, in terms of yours. So it was flaky with the butter. Could you taste the butter when you tasted it? Could you get that flavor of the butter? Um, it doesn't taste like uh, 
like a buttery biscuit, but it doesn't have as savory of a flavor as I was expecting. Like when you when you have like a warm biscuit for breakfast or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so I would say with mine, the dominant flavor was the salt flavor of it. Because the salt was really the only flavoring that I added to my crust. Because I didn't have butter, I just had flour, which really doesn't have much of a flavor, and Crisco, which doesn't have much of a flavor whatsoever. So the dominant flavor coming from the crust was the salt that I put into it. I've got loads of flavor. Loads yeah. of flavor <laughs> from my, right? Both from the butter and from the, the bacon fat. But really, the, the bacon fat it is really interesting um, when we don't have any at home and, and we make a pie crust, there's some savory notes that are missing in that. When we make meat pies, like a chicken pot pie or something like that, the bacon just goes, the bacon grease really sets off sort of some of those, those flavors you're getting with the, you know, the savory meats that you're adding to the middle. So we've done all the hard work, the pies are in the oven. Uh, it's about time to go have some fun and eat some delicious pies with our families. Uh, we want to wish everyone out there happy holidays, happy new year. Cheers. Cheers. Phenomenal. I like the way it came out. I think it's pretty tasty. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> and that's how I say bye bye to my son all the time. Bye bye. <laughs>